<laughs> Thank you for having me here at Skits and Quibbles. It's a real honour to be here tonight. I did have a little bit of a strange experience when I got off the train here. Um, as I got off the train, this fella's come up to me and he's gone, you're a big black bastard, aren't you? I went, whoa, what do you say to that? I just said, how can I help you, officer? <laughs> now, 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 I've, had, I've had a checkered past between myself and the police. I mean, I grew up in the 80s when there was a law called Sus Law. Now, for those of you who've never heard about Sus Law, it was a law that was originally brought in during the Napoleonic Wars to stop immigrants and vagrants on the streets. Now, for some reason, some genius, they thought they'd bring this back in the 80s so that the police could stop and search people they thought were suspicious. Black people. <laughs> they, they used to stop. Uh, uh, no word of a lie. I would get stopped at least once a week. So after a while, you started to get a bit pissed off with this, right? So I, I, I know it wasn't sensible, but I started to get a bit of an attitude. So one day, I got stopped by the police, and he's gone, you, turn out your pockets. So I went into my pockets, and I pulled out a bit of tissue. And he's gone, what's that? I said, it's tissue. He goes, is there anything in it? I said, yeah. He said, what? I said, bogey. <laughs> he gave me one of the vigorous searches I've ever had in my life. His hands went in places I wouldn't want you to imagine. Now, I learned two valuable lessons that day. Firstly, never be cheeky to the police. Secondly, never tell them bastards the truth. <laughs> now, I... I should have learnt my lesson then, but I've gone through life constantly making silly decisions that you think, I should have done it differently, right? The, the last one literally happened last week. I, I decided I wanted a little meal deal. Who, who doesn't love a little meal deal? So I went into Morrison's, right? And uh, they do. If you don't know Morrison's, it's a supermarket in the UK, and they have an amazing salad bar. And the salad bar is included in the meal deal. So I've gone up to the salad bar, and I've opened it up. Always start with a few boiled eggs. I've got four boiled eggs in there, then a bit of salad, a bit of coleslaw, packed it with potato salad. It's absolutely chocker. So then I went and got my crisps and my drink, and I've gone to pay for it. And I thought, do I get a bag? Do I get a bag? Fuck a bag. 30p for a bag, I'm not paying that. And, 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 I'm, and I'm thinking about the environment as well, right? So I've come out of Morrison's and I'm walking down the road and I thought, oh, I need to get some sweetness from Saver. Because Saver do the sweetness, they do the green ones, which are supposed to be better for you. So I've gone into Saver's and as I'm going down the aisle, I said, oh, I do need a bit of toothpaste. So I grabbed the toothpaste. I said, oh, I need a bit of deodorant. Grabbed a bit of deodorant. I said, I, I needed those, you know, those little tablets that you put in your water? I needed some of them. So I grabbed some of them. Then I, I, by the end of it, I've, I've got a handful of stuff. I'm standing at the checkout with all of this stuff in my hand. And I go, ah, the bloody sweetness. I see, I see them on the shelf there. I said, nah, this could all go pear shaped. This could all go pear shaped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all into a basket and grab the sweetness. As I've gone down, to go to the basket, Miss Sally has got away from me. As I've gone to catch it, I've just spanked it up into the air. It's opened up and cascaded like a beautiful waterfall of, of sweet corn and pasta. It's gone everywhere. And I've looked down at it and it's gone into the basket. It's mixed in with all of my bits and pieces. And I've looked up at the guy behind the counter and he's looked at me. He's wiped a bit of cucumber from his face and he's gone. I knew that was going to happen. I said, hey, why didn't you tell me? He goes, it at my place. So, so he's rang the bell. He's rang the bell. This girl's coming up, right? She's gone, what's happened here? I, I, I think it's a bit self-explanatory, my love. So I'm cleaning off my bits and pieces. I'm putting it on the shelf. He's giving me the wet wipes. And I've got it in there. Grab me sweet and I put it on there. And I'm there. I was there. And he's looked at me and he's gone, do you want a bag? <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, God, I'll have a bag. <laughs> now, again, again, it's all about this. Life is all about decision making, right? Like, now I'm I'm getting a bit longer in the tooth now, so I've got a bit of a problem. Um, I can't, when I was a young man, I used to be able to like go out, drink fifteen pints, drive to Manchester and back without needing a pee. Now, 
It's a different story, people. It's a completely different story. Now, I have two pints and I'm busting. So the other day I was doing a gig. The gig's finished and I've come out of the gig and I've gone, ah, shit, I didn't have a piss. I'm literally on the tube and busting. You know when you can feel it touching the cloth? You go, oh, no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I've had to jump off the tree and I've run into the park. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's a park in London called Finsbury Park. Now, it's lovely in the day. They do festivals and all sorts of things in the day. But it's not a place you want to go at night time. At night time, there's all sorts of interesting characters in there. So I'm in there and I've got my willy out and I'm having a wee. And there's something primeval about being outside. You feel the breeze blowing through your nuts. It's wonderful. And I'm at the age now when my nuts are literally nestled in the grass. So it's wonderful. So I'm there. And then all of a sudden, I feel a presence behind me. I go, no. I look over my shoulder, and there's a guy with a massive fuck-off knife. I go, oh. So I've turned around, I'm facing him. So now, I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I've literally brought my cock to a knife fight. And I've looked at him, and I've said, mate, come on. This isn't fair. You need to go home and get a bigger knife. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, th th this term, I actually read about it, but tell us, Windrush, how do, th do you explain? You know, people talk about yeah. Windrush generation and then when that part, th that date comes, oh my gosh, you can yeah. tell everybody from the Caribbean, it just like yeah. joins in. So, you know, you can feel the energy of it in, mm. in, in London, everywhere, the flags, the music, the food, everything just comes together. And it's like pockets of activities. It's incredible. I don't know if they do it in other parts of the world, but in London, it's beautiful. Yeah, so I, tell us, what are we celebrating well, when it's like a Windrush day? The, well, the Windrush, basically what it was is like, that was the name of one of the ships that, that mm. came over. Um, oh, that uh, was the name of the, the ship. ship. Yeah, that was the name of the one of the, the ships that came over. It was like a, it's like a three, four week journey. My mum was telling me when she she came over like again you she didn't know what to expect but it was like a pretty much of a world tour they went through the Anna they came, went to Spain they went to Portugal and they you know then they came into into the UK and but nobody knew what to expect I mean there was lots of different ships coming from lots of different islands but they were they were promised that like great employment and you know it's the the, the motherland because they they loved this country like my mother and my grandma my grandma, till the day she died, she had a massive uh, picture of the Queen on the wall in her coronation outfit. They loved her. My mum, every magazine that uh, had a pull out with the Queen, she'd get it. So they all felt that this was the, the motherland part of their community. And, then, and when they came over, <laughs> it was a bit of a shock to the system. system. Yeah. Oh, but it's such a nice, actually, this is such a nice, like a priming us of what is coming because mm. you've got more material. Wonderful. Now, if you were to um, go back to the moment in your life that you personally think uh, most impacted you. I think I must have been about maybe, maybe eight, seven or eight. And I was in the playground with another kid, right? And... Uh, I was quite shy, but I think I've always been a good negotiator, and he had these cards that I wanted. So I had really shitty ones, right? <laughs> so I managed to negotiate, getting his good ones and giving him my shit ones. And then I, I was really pleased, for maybe, maybe for about five, six minutes, and then I thought to myself, ooh, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. And I thought then, I thought, so why did I do that? So I thought, you know what? I said, from now on, I'm going to make an effort. I, felt, I, I remember thinking to myself, I'm not a particularly nice person, but I'm going to try to be nicer. I mean, obviously, mm. you don't succeed. Then, and I think it's a... And ever since then, I always, always try to... to do the right thing or the, and because you you know when you're not doing the right things your instincts tell you but i mean we all do it though we all do all do shit things right like <laughs> we're, we're human but i i try and be conscious of that and try not to do it but uh, but that was the time when i first thought of it that when i was there with that little kids like football cards and uh and that's what I've tried to do all my life. And I, I think of myself as quite a positive person. I try to be positive and I try that's to think... powerful. And how old were yeah. you then? I was about eight. Wow. That is super, yeah. super mature. Wonderful. Andy James, everybody. Woo-woo! Yeah. And he will... Um, 
do uh, a special poem for us uh, now, which is, uh, well, yeah. you tell us about it. <laughs> the first one is uh, about, I think a lot of people don't know about, and I think I, when I heard about it, I thought, how have I not heard about this um, previously? It was about uh, uh, the sunken um, cities in the United States. Like, uh, there was, uh, in the start of the 20th century, there were many, many uh, black communities that after slavery were starting to do well. So they they had their own universities, schools, and businesses. And, uh, and especially, you know, we know what the, it wasn't even just in the South, but it was in the North as well. And uh, what would happen is like, because they could see these communities were, were thriving, uh, they would trump up a sort of rape charge and then they would go into these communities and pretty much just kill everybody there, destroy them, chase them out. Uh, and then to hide it, they would then either build a park, like Central Park was built on top of a black community, or they would uh, bury them underwater and in, turn them into lakes. Now this happened so many times. I mean, it's not just one, maybe 30, 40 times in America, communities that and they say well why have black people not done so well over there they they then they were cut off at the knees and the early doors when they were doing well so so this poem and i thought how have i not known about it if anybody wants to know more there's a lady on youtube call i think it's amber rudd or just tap in uh american towns under the water and it, and there's there's a fantastic documentary on there i can't remember it's by but look out Minilka, and it, it goes into detail about every single one of those communities that are gone so this is a, the poem i wrote about that which is called uh, still there under the water it's still there under the water the place where a father once hugged his daughter where the children once played without a care before evil men filled their world with fear where teachers educated and taught their classes now floats to the surface their reading glasses, where the church bell rang every Sunday morning before they stopped so brutally with little warning. There was a community of people that didn't want any strife. All they wanted was a better life. How this could happen, it's a mystery. This is a shame, a blot on American history. The cruel, jealous people couldn't bear to see Black people being successful and living free. Okay, this is, I won't tell you what it's called, the other, you'll get it at, at the end of it. Uh, and again, this is about my mother's journey when she came over um, to the UK. I love my mother dearly, as all good sons should do. I love her for good reason, because she came to clean up poo. An invite from the Commonwealth to a land where dreams come true, where people are all friendly and always welcome you. So to the ships they filled like sardines, the wind rush and others too, to this land of opportunity, to a life all fresh and new. The rain, it fell down heavy. So it was time to dawn a Mac. And the signs on all the houses said, no Irish, no dogs. No blacks. She told me how she looked for work. She walked the streets for days and days. She was happy to do anything, so the rent that she could pay. She finally found a job. After others that did fail, she was happy to be working, to clean for British Rail. She had to clean the toilets each and every night. Some people can be nasty. There were some really dreadful sights. For over 30 years she worked there, cleaning through the night. She did it for good reason, so our future could be bright. This is the story of a love that is pure and good and true, where you travel to a new country and for your family you clean up poo.